why is the uncontrolled use of antibiotics dangerous and what can we do to mitigate this? So antibiotics are normally used to treat um, bacterial infections and they can be used in an uncontrolled manner when they're prescribed and they're not necessary. And this is quite common for like viral infections, for example, and also when people take them for longer or shorter than prescribed. And the major consequence of the uncontrolled use is antibiotic resistance, as this um, creates a selective pressure for resistant bacteria um, and these grow in prevalence. And this means that less antibiotics are able to treat um, like severe infections, which may be life-threatening. Um, examples of this include um, MRSA, which is particularly prevalent in hospitals where people are more likely to be vulnerable to the bacterial disease. And the greatest concern of this is that new strains of bacteria will emerge that cannot be treated by any current antibiotics. So in order to mitigate these consequences, um, there's kind of a field or an area of research called antibiotic stewardship. And one of the main kind of principles of this is changing the way in which doctors prescribe. So for example, not prescribing things for viral infections or just because the patient you know, wants to be prescribed antibiotics. And I think the NHS recommends that they're not prescribed for kind of routinely, like for a mild sore throat, for example. And then also people can take personal actions, like taking them for the exact amount of time they're prescribed and, you know, not sharing them and also just generally better hygiene to reduce the rate of bacterial infection. And similarly, uh, vaccinating against bacterial diseases like the pneumococcal vaccine, and that will reduce the need for antibiotics. Hi, I'm Arisma, a second year medical student at King's, and today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about antibiotic resistance. So in questions like these, structure is key. As you saw the candidate just now, her structure for this answer was amazing. So here's just some quick tips on how you can structure any answer relating to antibiotics or antibiotic resistance. So start off with what? What are antibiotics? These are chemical substances that help fight off bacterial infections by either killing the bacteria themselves, and these are known as bactericidal antibiotics, or by preventing the bacteria from reproducing, and these are known as bacteriostatic um, antibiotics. So these are the mechanisms as to how antibiotics may work. And now looking at some examples, the most popular example of antibiotics that I'm sure all of you would have heard of is penicillin and all of its derivatives. So most of the times when you go to the GP, you are prescribed some sort of derivative of penicillin, for example, amoxicillin. So anything ending in cillin is just a penicillin der derivative and um, they're all antibiotics. Um, and so a bit of a history detour, how were antibiotics discovered? They were discovered by a scientist named Alexander Fleming, who was a bit of a careless lab technician and left a culture of bacteria just out in the open and forgot to cover it up. Um, when he came back from his two week vacation, apparently, he saw that a mold had developed and wherever the mold was, the bacteria was no longer there. So there was definitely some sort of active agent in the mold that had killed off the bacteria. When he studied the mold more, he found out that this was penicillium and he named that active agent in penicillium penicillin and um, we started extracting that from penicillium, started using that as antibiotics and now we've moved on and we can artificially create that in labs. Now moving on to the next part of this answer and that is antibiotic resistance. So what is it? It is a mechanism by which bacteria become resistant to antibiotics. So certain antibiotics don't work on them anymore and therefore won't be effective in fighting off that bacterial infection. And how does this arise? So this is a very simple biological phenomenon that I'm sure all of you have heard of before, and that is simple and basic evolution. So what happens in your body, for example, is, is that you have a whole host of bacteria in your body and you've been infected by them. And you take a course of antibiotics and say that kills 99% of the bacteria. But for some reason, 1% of the bacteria just 
isn't killed off and this is probably because they have some sort of a mutation that made them resistant to the antibiotics and this is just purely by chance this is a mutation that is purely random and purely by chance but since that strain of bacteria is the only one that's left alive that is the only one that can continue to reproduce and produce offspring and pass on that mutation to its offspring and thus all of the new bacteria now will have that mutation and will be resistant to that particular antibiotic and this is an increasingly common phenomenon making lots of antibiotics pretty much useless. An example of this that you may have heard of is MRSA or methicillin resistant Staph aureus. So now doctors have to prescribe a different set of antibiotics to work against Staph aureus. However, this poses its own issues and can create a new set of antibiotic resistant bacteria such as multiple drug resistant Gram negative bacilli. Interestingly, when Fleming was awarded his Nobel Prize, he actually spoke about antibiotic resistance and predicted it and spoke about how people may underdose themselves and by giving themselves a non-lethal dose of the antibiotic that could eventually make the bacteria resistant to antibiotics and he was absolutely right. Next, what are the consequences of antibiotic resistance? First and very obviously, if bacteria are going to be resistant to antibiotics and antibiotics can no longer kill bacteria, we can no longer fight off bacterial infections. And that is very, very dangerous, especially for immunocompromised populations. If antibiotics can't treat bacterial diseases, we will soon go back to a world where surgeries could be fatal and could cause sepsis very easily. Back in the ages before antibiotics, certain bacteria almost had an 80% mortality rate, something that is unheard of in today's day and age. And so antibiotic resistance is a very scary phenomenon and is something that we need to actively fight against. Now moving on to solutions for antibiotic resistance. Always start small, so let's look at the individual level first. First off, it's really important that you finish your course of antibiotics, even if you start to feel better. And this is to make sure that absolutely every single bacteria is killed off in your body and there's no bacteria left that can pass on mutations that could potentially cause antibiotic resistance. Second, make sure that you don't ask your GP for antibiotics unnecessarily. If the GP thinks this is a bacterial infection, they will prescribe you antibiotics. But remember, there are multiple diseases such as colds that you might think would be fixed by antibiotics, but they're actually viral in nature and antibiotics would do nothing for them. And lastly, it's really important to get vaccinated wherever possible. If you're vaccinated against certain diseases, then that means the bacteria can't infect you in the first place and you wouldn't need the antibiotics. Now moving on to the next level, the healthcare and agriculture industries. So antibiotics are also used in the agriculture industries to kill off um, bacteria in animal feeds and so on. So again, it's really important to minimize the use of antibiotics and make sure you're just using them for the right purposes and only when it is a confirmed bacterial case. So a new concept of antibiotic stewardship has come up in the healthcare industry um, and the candidate spoke about it very well, so there's nothing much else for me to say about that. Um, but that is a great way to regulate the use of antibiotics as a healthcare professional. Now, the last level that we're looking at is the government and policymakers and researchers. It's really important for governments and policymakers to increase their spending and funding for research in antibiotics. The last completely new antibiotic was discovered back in the 80s and it's been so long and no wonder there is antibiotic resistance. It's really important for Big Pharma to also invest in creating new antibiotics so we can prevent these issues from coming up in the future. And as always in every ethics situation, don't forget to mention the four pillars of medical ethics that will definitely take your answer to the next level. We hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for the next one. Our one-to-one -one online interview tutoring offers a tailor-made service personalised to your specific universities and medicine interviews, including MMI, Panel and Oxbridge. Our expert tutors will enable you to articulate yourself, practice mock interview questions, as well as receive extensive feedback on your performance. You will also gain access to our online interview course with over 150 tutorials and over 200 exemplar answers.